Hello there, everybody. Uh, it's it's uh, Winston Stevenson here on the uh, line. I see we've got quite a few people uh, on the uh, on the webinar with us right now. I see uh, Marie Stanley, uh, Michael Chapman. Good to see you guys on there, and uh, Jim Fetterman. Mary, um, Michael Chapman, good to see you guys. Hey, I'm going to just kind of hold here for about another minute because we're going to let a few more people kind of drift in on this. And uh, then we're going to get started on strategies that are used to optimize your Social Security benefits. Got a few little um, interesting stories to share with you to kind of illustrate a point. But um, I see that, Catherine, you just joined us. So good deal. We have to Hey, Deb Holcomb, I see you're on there. Good to see you. So, um, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to go ahead and get started because everybody that's already on here came right on time, so we no need to really wait. Again, my name is Winston Stevenson, and I am with Winston & Company's Retirement and Financial Services. We are licensed insurance agents. We are securities licensed as an investment advisor representative with Brookstone Capital Management, and I'm hosting this event today. Uh, we offer retirement strategies, which may include the use of annuities. Uh, we may talk about how to use annuities or other investment products that may be used to fill retirement income gaps after this presentation. Uh, I do not represent, I'm, I'm, I'm required to say this, that I do not represent, let me, let me open up this uh, shade here just a second, get a little bit more light on the side of my face. We do not represent any government agency, and I'm required to say that because we're talking about Social Security. So we don't work with Social Security. Uh, information about this topic that we're talking about today is widely available at no cost to you from the Social Security Administration. And you can find that online at www.ssa.gov, okay? So now that's out of the way. I want to talk about uh, a couple of offers that we're going to put out there today for those of you who wish to schedule a visit with us after the webinar is over with. So you will see that we have a, uh, a chat room available to you, and I'll reference that from time to time. If you have any questions, you can put them into the chat um, uh, or you can reach out to us, you know, at the conclusion of the event. And when it's over with, we are going to be reaching out to you to see how you liked it, uh, to see if there's any questions that maybe you didn't get a chance to, to field or we didn't get a chance to field. And then we're going to offer you guys, we have two offers today for those of you that wish to schedule a visit. <clears throat> the first offer is a white paper. And, you know, usually you think of a white paper, you think of a one page thing, but this is really something that you're going to want. OK, this is called what, when, who and how Social Security works. It's a 16 pages about everything you're going to want to know about Social Security. And like I said, believe me, you're going to want this. It's, it's really powerful. The people that we've given it to, it's a new piece that we just got. Uh, we've handed out about five of them. That's all at this point. But um, the people that have gotten them were like, wow, this, is, this answered everything for me. So be sure to get that copy of that white paper from us. And the second thing that we're gonna offer, while supplies last, now I say while supplies na last, not to sound cheesy, but we only have a box and a half of them left. And then we're gonna order the, um, the next version of them, okay? So while supplies last, the no compromise retirement plan, I'm just holding it up in front of the screen. This book was written not by me, but by Marty Ruby. Now, Marty is a actuary, and an actuary is basically a mathematical savant. They're the people insurance companies hire to price insurance products, and he's a very brilliant guy. And uh, I was asked by Marty to write the foreword to this book because he knows that our practice is very involved in full service planning and the like. And so, um, you know, it's kind of a nice honor to have, to have been able to write the forward to that. So be sure to ask us for the book offer as well. The no compromise retirement plan. It discusses the three main conflicts that take place in virtually anybody's retirement plan. Okay. So um, also, I want to remind you that uh, we have a Calendly link available in the group chat 
where you can go on and schedule a time to come and visit with us. And uh, again, we'll, we'll direct you to our website, which is www.winstonandcompanies.com. All right. Our email is on there as well. You can email us if you have any information that you need after this. So I have to put this disclaimer up. I'm not going to sit here and read this whole thing to you. But throughout the program, we may generally discuss different financial vehicles. However, nothing that I say here today should be construed as any recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle, okay? Um, nor should it be used to make any decisions today about your investments. As a fiduciary, we are held to a higher standard where we need to bring people in. We need to ask uh, a lot of questions about what you have now so that we can help make uh, informed decisions on how to best guide you, okay? So at Winston & Companies, it's not a, um, a quick sale type of a program. But our goal here today is to expose you to ideas, financial vehicles, including annuities and other investments that can create lifetime income for you that can be used to augment the government entitlement known of as Social Security. Okay, so enough on that. Let's kind of jump into the, the program. Today's topics, we're going to get involved, number one, in general information on how Social Security retirement benefits work, how you can get the most out of your Social Security retirement benefits, and number three, the importance of coordinating all facets of your retirement income strategy. Okay, so the, the thing that I want you to really recognize is that while today's topic is about Social Security, it's really about more than just Social Security because what we're trying to do here is show you how Social Security is a part of your retirement planning, okay? And, you know, the, the thing that I want to share with you is how you can get um, – fully understand how you can fully understand social security benefits as one part of your overall income strategy. So while you make appropriate financial decisions for your retirement, you need to consider all of your resources and how they will work together to form the entire the entirety of your retirement income strategy. Many of you have heard me talk about the three-legged stool. And the three-legged stool, which I'll pull up next here, talks exactly about that. Historically, we've been, uh, we've always referred to the traditional sources of retirement income as the three-legged stool. And, you know, we've all been to a restaurant or a bar or someplace like that, where we sat on a stool, and one of the legs was either loose, or it was not the proper length, or it just didn't sit even on the floor. And if you think about that, how that could drive you crazy, okay? Used to be in the old day, we'd go get a matchbook when they used to hand out matchbooks. So we'd slide a matchbook under one of the legs to level it out to make it more comfortable. Well, today, nobody sells, nobody gives matches out anymore at restaurants except for Papado. Um, we want to we wanna help you build at least a three-legged stool of income during your retirement. So the first leg is Social Security, all right? Social Security entitlements. Uh, that includes Social Security and Medicare, all right? So Medicare is, is, is a webinar that we're going to be putting on next week. So you're going to get an invitation to come to our Medicare webinar next week. And that is a fascinating webinar because it wasn't so many years ago when I really didn't understand a whole lot about Medicare myself, and we made it our business to really know about it and how it integrates with Social Security. So you're going to want to attend that one as well. Personal savings and investments. That's the that's the stool, the 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 one over on the right, the retirement savings. Okay, maybe you have IRAs, maybe you have um, money that you had sold a house, money that you inherited. Okay, that's that's personal savings and investments. And then the the one in the middle is employer sponsored plans. And what are we talking about there? We're talking about 401ks. We're talking about um, 403bs, 401a, 457 plans. And for federal employees, their 
equivalent to a 401k is known as the Thrift Savings Plan or TSP. So in the past, typically retirees could count on three sources of retirement income that divided roughly into thirds. Now, since the advent of the 401k, the uh, a lot of employers have moved away from the defined benefit pension plan, which, uh, you know, kind of put the onus of your retirement savings on the back of the worker. So these days, the general perception of the pension is that they are few and far between unless you work for the federal government, state or city, something like that. All right. Um, the problem with with that situation is that today people are living longer than ever before and we're having longer lifespans. It's now more common to see employer sponsored plans like the defined contribution plans that are the 401k and the 403b. So those plans really have no guarantee of a lifetime of retirement income. So while social security is able to pay benefits to these retirees, it is widely acknowledged that changes must be implemented to sustain the program. And we're going to kind of talk about that. Then there's our own personal savings and investments. They should be looked at. They should be studied. They should go through a stress test. And that's something that we do offer to our clients here at Winston and Companies. You may find yourself in a situation where you do not have the defined benefit pension plan. And if so, you'll likely be relying more heavily on social security benefits and any retirement savings that you have from, again, from a defined contribution plan. So how does money that's in a 401k, for example, a defined contribution plan, provide guaranteed income to make up one of the legs of the stool. That's something that you should really uh, be thinking about. And it's something that we can discuss with you here at Winston and Companies. So um, enough on the three legged stool. I hope I got that point across. Three legs are certainly more comfortable to sit on than one or two legs. Five legs was better than three even, okay? So the more legs of income that you have, the better you'll be. So let's start with general information. Let's talk about Social Security and perhaps the most common question that we get asked. Will Social Security be there for us in the future? Well, that's a great question, you know, and it's something that my dad, my father, who is 89 years old now, God bless him. He's back in Buffalo, New York still, and he's doing well. But he's getting old. And about three years ago, my dad came to one of the Social Security seminars we put on up at the um, uh, Paradise Valley Community College up on 32nd Street in Union Hills. And he sat in the class. And when it was over with, he, he came up to me and he put his arm around me. He says, you did a nice job, son. But I got to tell you, th this message that, that Social Security is going to go away has been out there ever since he started in the financial business in the 1950s. He says every financial advisor out there uses Social Security as a scare technique to try to scare people into believing that Social Security is not going to be there for us in the future. So what you're going to see is that we really don't take that tack, okay? Um, we we kind of look at Social Security as, a, as it will be around. It'll probably be in some different permutation than it is now because it evolves. And we're going to talk about the evolution of Social Security here in, in just a little bit. But I do want to direct your attention to the little Social Security card and the little comic that it has on there. And it's kind of hard to read, so I'll, I'll help you read it. The guy on the left is Madoff. And he says, uh, this guy Madoff is going down. Remember Bernie Madoff? He made off with everybody's money. So this guy Madoff is going down. He was paying off his old investors with money he got from new ones. And there's Uncle Sam on the right. And he's looking a little sweaty under the collar there. And he says, you mean you can get busted for doing that? Well, the reason they can get busted for doing that is it's a Ponzi scheme. OK, that's what Bernard Madoff was ultimately convicted of is a Ponzi scheme. But at the end of the day, the little joke is funny because although Social Security was originally intended to be a fully funded system financed by payroll taxes back in 1939, the fully funded system was replaced 
by a pay-as-you-go system. So the money that is paid into the system uh, really is used to pay the benefactors of Social Security today. OK, so the, the bottom line is, is that um, Social Security taxes that are paid by working individuals today are used to contribute to the funds that are being received by retired workers. Thus, the current generation provides for the retired generation. It's not how Social Security was originated or designed to be but it's what it has become. So just as a alert to you guys for additional information on funding of the social security system, you can go to www.ssa.gov and dig down a little bit deeper and find about the funding of social security. We are going to go on and touch that though here just in a moment. So this is a note from the social security administration uh, dated April of 2020, so it's reasonably current. The trustees project that the combined OASDI, do you guys know what OASDI stands for? It is the Old Age Survivors Disability Insurance Program. That's what Social Security was called when it originated, um, and the name has changed to Social Security. So the trustees project that the OASDI trust fund will continue growing through just this year as total income exceeds total annual cost. As of last April, they projected that Social Security annual costs would begin to exceed total income starting this year in 2021 so that the trust fund reserves will be drawn down until they are depleted in the year 2035. After trust fund reserve depletion, uh, continuing income would be sufficient to pay only about 79% of program costs, declining to 73% by the year 2094. Now, we provided you again with that link to the source so you can read this message in its entirety, again, at www.ssa.gov. But what they're projecting here is not that Social Security is going away, okay? We hear a lot of water cooler talk. We hear people talking that, you know, come that used to come to our seminars when we were doing them live in the community colleges. And we hear people talking about, you know, Social Security is going to go away and I'm going to, I'm going to jump and take my social security now so that I can get something uh, before it goes away. However, just because benefits are scheduled to be reduced based on the current system, it doesn't necessarily mean that benefits must be reduced. Okay, let me make that clear. Our federal government may take different approaches and pull money from other tax revenues, for example. But based on projections, Social Security tax revenues won't be enough by themselves to fund fully fund benefits in 2035 unless something is done. Now, the challenge of that is that Congress is really good at doing one thing, and that is doing nothing until the 11th hour, and then it's on the news that they're out there at uh, midnight and they pass legislation and at the stroke of midnight to save Social Security. You can almost bank on it happening again. So the thing is, is that a lot of people look at Social Security and they say, I'm taking my money right now. I'm worried Social Security will be gone in the future. So I'm going to take my benefit now while I still can, meaning while Social Security still exists. So I want to ask you, you know, what, oh, excuse me, I moved the thing ahead there too far. What's wrong with that? You know, what's wrong with that? Um, well, as we said, we just found out that Social Security is not going away. But if benefits are reduced in the future, potentially optimizing your benefits today could help make sure that you get the most that you can after that potential reduction, if it happens at all. All right. So what we can do is try to do the best we can with what's in front of us. So just quickly talk about a couple of things. What might change? All right. What might change? One of the things that gets bannered about very frequently is the idea that um, means testing could 
come into being. And means testing means that basically what it sounds like, if you have the means to not need social security, then they're not going to give it to you. They're going to give it to someone else that does need it. That would be a horribly, horribly unpopular thing to do. All right. Can you imagine you, you kicked into social security for 20, 30 years, and then you're told, well, we're going to give your money to somebody else that wouldn't fly very well, but it's something that's talked about, but more realistically, what might change is they could push the full retirement age back for younger people. So many of you guys in the, uh, that work with our company, know my son, Shane, Shane's 25 years old. Well, by the time Shane reaches retirement age, it's very likely that Social Security full retirement age might be something more like 70 or maybe even 72. All right. Um, increase taxes on those who are working. So in other words, raise FICA deductions to, um, you know, raise the FICA deduction from their payroll to fund the system more fully. Play with the consumer price index numbers which is used to, you know, uh, create pay increases, adjust earning restrictions, and any combination of those items above. So there's lots of different things that, that could be done uh, to, to make this stuff happen. Now, I want to talk about something that we talk about very frequently with people. We say, hey, how to optimize your Social Security benefits? Well, there's a couple of things that you need to know, all right? Um, one of my uh, good friends, a mentor in the business, this guy named was David Vick. He used to joke when we'd put on social security classes over at Scottsdale Community College. He would say to everybody in the room, hey, do you guys want to know how to maximize social security benefits? Everybody's going to raise their hand. He goes, wait till you're age 70. And they drop the mic and walk out of the room. That was kind of his shtick, right? Well, the fact of the matter is, that does work, but it does not work for everybody in the room because certain people might have health conditions. Uh, there's a myriad of reasons why people might not want to wait till 70. But most importantly, you need to know the rules. And that's why you're going to want that white paper. But I want to tell a story real quick about a gentleman that some of you may know by the name of Tiger Woods. Um, Tiger Woods, professional golfer. Back in, I, you know, I don't know the year, I apologize, I'll have to look that up. It was in the 1990s, before the Phoenix Open became the largest attended sporting event in the country. Tiger was a young man, he was very skinny, and he was playing in the Phoenix Open. And on the 13th hole in the last round, Tiger hits a tee shot and the ball goes left off the fairway, bounces through the gravel and lands right behind a gigantic rock. Okay. Now you might be thinking, Winston, I'm tuned in to hear about social security. What are you telling me about Tiger Woods hitting a ball behind a rock? Well, the story is the story of the loose impediment rule. Now, Tiger Woods, as a young man, grew up knowing golf and he made it his business to know the PGA rule book like nobody else. He knew every rule in the PGA rule books. In fact, sometimes PGA rule officials would seek the advice of Tiger Woods to make, help them make a ruling on a, on a golf shot that was pending on the golf course. Anyways, during this uh, 13th hole, he hits the ball left. The ball lands behind a rock. Some of you may remember this, but if you don't remember it, I want you to go on YouTube. And in fact, Maybe, hey, can we get them sent out the YouTube link on this when we're done? Awesome. What we're going to do is we're going to send you out when we're done the YouTube link to the uh, Tiger Woods video of the loose impediment rule. So the ball lands behind the rock. Tiger's got no shot. He's in a tight match. If he hits the ball backwards to put it into the fairway, he's going to lose a stroke. But because he knew the rules, what he did is he called a rules official over and he said, my ball is behind this boulder. Is this boulder anchored to the ground by a steel rod or anything like that? Nope, it's just sitting there. He says, so if it's just sitting there, it must be a loose impediment because the, the rule has nothing to do with size or weight of the loose impediment. So he said, if I can move this boulder, then I have a clear shot at the green. Rules official said, yes, but I don't know how you're going to move that boulder, Tiger. So Tiger looks over to the 
cart path where there's one of those little yellow ropes and there's a bunch of guys standing there watching him to, you know, see what he's going to do. And he says, Hey fellas, how about come over here and help me move this boulder? So they get about eight or 10 guys come over and they get their hands under the boulder and they try to move it and it won't move. Okay. So he says, geez, we got to, we got to get this thing moved, you know, and a couple more guys come in and they one, two, three, and they heave this boulder and suddenly the thing tips up on its side and they push it over. And now it's out of the way. Okay. So the, the, the bottom line is, is that he got the boulder out of the way. He has a clear shot to the green. He puts the ball on the green. He makes birdie. And later on, after a couple more holes, he wins the golf tournament. How about that? So the rules, you got to know the rules, especially as it relates to social security, because this is going to be a big part of your money. Let me give you an example. Something my dad taught me about this. He says, if you're getting, you know, two, three thousand dollars a month from social security, he goes, imagine how much money you would have to have in investments to generate two, three thousand dollars a month for life. Okay, that's just one way of looking at it. So let's jump in here and let's look at the full retirement age and collecting benefits early. All right. So as you see this chart right here, you're going to note that um, the, the, on the first column called the year of birth, it tells you the, that based on the year that you were born, what your full retirement age is. So we can look for a certain year of birth. Let's say it's 1958 and look at the next column to the right and you'll see the full or normal retirement age for someone born in 1958 is 66 and eight months. Then when we get to, uh, to those born in 1960 or later, now likely many of you on this call were born 1960 and later. So I was born in 1962. All right. So that puts me into that category. Um, full retirement age lands at an even 67 or age 67. This simplifies things if you were born 60 and later. Imagine the following scenario. So when you are 67, let's imagine that your benefits would be an even $1,000 a month. So $1,000 a month, it may be more or it may be less, but just for illustrative purposes, let's go with $1,000 a month. What would your benefit be if you took it early, say at age 62? Well, that's what the column says. Uh, it says $700. So instead of 1000 a month, you would get $700. In other words, your benefit would be reduced to take Social Security early at age 62. It would be reduced by 30%. And every year that you wait to take benefits between 62 and 67, your benefits uh, would go up on a pro rata basis, meaning in proportion. So you can actually calculate exactly what, could, what they could be. The important thing to understand here is that your benefits are reduced. And if you take them at 62, they are reduced permanently. Now, a lot of you guys know John Roller here in the office, and when he when his kids were little, he used to take them to the drive through at McDonald's to get um, ice cream and then or they get the little um, McDonald's kitty pack, you know, the, the, the meal for the kids and um, his kids would fight in the back seat over which toy. You know, no matter what the kid got, it was the wrong toy. The other kid wanted it and he wanted the others. So he used to say to them, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. So if you start your Social Security at 62, remember that line, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. So now the next column over talks about spousal benefits. So one of the things that you should be aware of, for some people, a spouse uh, that have a spouse, and you're probably heard of this, spouses may claim benefits based on the record of the person that they're married to. They may be able to get up to half of their spouse's benefits. Now, historically speaking, okay, we're talking old school here where a husband and wife were a man and a woman, and they had a couple of children, and the woman stayed home and raised the kids. And this is relevant 
I know it's maybe politically incorrect, but this is relevant because this is where this all started from is back in the days in the 50s and the 60s, right? So the husband has a larger social security benefit because he was the guy that was out work and then the, the mom or the wife has a smaller social security benefit. But who knows? Uh, it might be reversed today, okay? Um, the point is that historically speaking, since the wife stayed home, she may not have had as big of a benefit. She can get up to half of her husband's benefit. We call this the June Cleaver benefit because remember Ward would go off to work with his briefcase and leave it to Beaver and June would stay home and take care of the kids. Um, if she files early, say at 62, uh, instead of getting $500 a month, which would be about half of a thousand, she would only get 325. Same principle applies, but the longer she waits, the bigger the benefit gets. So that's full retirement age benefits reduction. That's so that's full retirement age and benefit reduction for retiring early. All right. So what we would recommend is that you come in and visit with us here at Winston and companies and allow us to review your social security statements and help you to optimize and uh, collect the benefits that are going to be most appropriate for you. Again, chap, uh, we have on the chat website where you can uh, find our Calendly link and follow up email to us. I don't see any um, um, questions on the chat as of the moment, but delayed retirement credits is something we're going to talk about next. In other words, taking income now versus taking income later. So I'm going to venture to guess just in the name of brevity that everybody on this webinar was probably born 1943 and later. If you were born earlier than that, just look above the last, uh, last horizontal column. If you were born 1943 and later, for every year, excuse me, for every year that you defer your social security, it's going to increase your yearly rate by 8%. And that's guaranteed. So think about it. Where are you getting a guaranteed 8% on your money to defer it these days? By the way, what's a bank paying you today? Maybe one quarter of 1%. So um, just give that some consideration, okay? If you have longevity in your family, then you may really want to consider deferring Social Security at least for one of the other people to age 70 because people are living so much longer today. Now, what's that got to do with any? Well, the surviving spouse gets to keep the higher of the two benefits. So in today's world, it is not unrealistic to see that maybe one spouse or another could live well into their 90s without the other spouse. So by deferring one of the um, usually the highest uh, breadwinners social security to age 70 to maximize that it goes way beyond age 70, because it will provide the largest benefit for the surviving spouse, which only helps with the rising cost of living. All right, so we like to recommend that as we're building out retirement plans in our flight plan. Longevity is, this is the key. People are living longer and longer today than ever before. So according to the Society of Actuaries, Marty Ruby, one of them, uh, if a man and a woman are married, the chance that at least one of them will live at any given age is increased. Uh, there's a 50% chance for a married couple that one of them, one of them will at least live to age 92. All right. So that's an actuarial type of a calculation. Think about that in your own life. Does that matter? Well, if it does, hold on to your hat because we're just getting started here. Um, this is this is where we really get down to the um, uh, the nuts and bolts of Social Security, because we've already talked about how you can file early. You can also file late. You could file at your full retirement age. You could file on a spouse's record. We've already talked about all that. You could even file on a divorce or deceased spouse's record, which leads me to a little story I want to tell you about uh, a client we have, and she just goes by the code name Espy. So Espy um, was married for 32 years, and she had the the great misfortune of losing her husband at way too young of an age. 
Um, Espy later in life had the great fortune of meeting another a uh, great guy, and they decided, and they announced to me that they wanted to get married on February 22nd, 2022, because they thought that would be a cute and memorable date for a wedding. But the fact of the matter is, when I looked at their flight plan, I said, SB, you realize, of course, that if you do that, you're only 58 years of age on that date. And she says, well, what's the problem? And I said, well, remember, you got to know the rules because the rules can work in your favor or the rules can work against you. And in this particular case, Espy was very shocked to learn that she, if she married, if she remarried before the age of 60, she would then give up all of her widower benefits from her previous marriage. And while it was shocking and while it was disappointing, it was also a great moment in our planning because we were able to show her that she needed to defer that date of matrimony in order to optimize her widower benefits. So these are things that really are real life scenarios that happen. And while there are many, many filing scenarios, only a few options will likely make sense for your individual situation. Okay, so again, I want to I want to encourage you when this is over with to sign up to come in if you're already a client of ours it's a great opportunity to do a review. If you're somebody new and you have not worked with Winston and companies at this point, we want to encourage you to come in and start that conversation about your retirement income and learn about our uh, a proprietary flight plan process, which is a second to none written uh, program of, 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 or a pathway to a successful outcome in retirement. So how earnings affect your benefits in 2021? Well, again, let's go back to the guy that wants to retire or the gal that wants to retire at age 62. This, by the way, is as of this year, 2021. When you take benefits early and continue to work, your benefits will be reduced if your earnings exceed certain limits for the months that you reach full retirement age. So let's imagine, if you will, uh, that your retirement age is 66, but you go ahead and you pull the trigger and you start taking Social Security at 62, but yet you're still working part time. Anything that you earn in excess of $18,960 for the year will result in a reduction of your Social Security benefit, which, you know, if you ask me, that's a real, it should be a real deterrent. So let's give it a live example. Let's make it simple. Let's imagine that instead of earning $18,900, you, you earn exactly $10,000 more than that or, or, or $28,960. So what does that mean? Well, that's $10,000 above your limit. $1 of benefit is, re is deducted from your Social Security benefit for every $2 of earnings. So you might say, well, so what does that mean? Well, you're 10000 above that number. Because you earned money above the earnings limit, your Social Security benefit will, reduced, will be reduced by $5,000 which could be very significant. Uh, well, the year in which you turn 66, you're for, the, now this is, this is a tricky thing. The year in which you turn 66, your full retirement age, $1 of benefits is deducted for every social security benefit for every $3 of earnings over 50,000. Confusing as heck, right? It's a trap. Uncle Sam, the IRS writes, tricky verbiage into this thing to intentionally trip people up. So they really have loosened up a bit, but it's only applied to months before your birthday. So that at full retirement age date, let's say that you turn 66 in May, you can earn $50,000 between January and April and not be penalized at all. So that helps out quite a bit. Now, remember, of course, once you reach full retirement age, you can work all you want, make all the money in the world, and, and there's no impact on your Social Security earnings. So one of the things that you, you know, we kind of like to subscribe to the KISS formula around here. Keep it simple and sincere, all right? 
if you can, if you're going to turn on social security at 65 and a half, then you're going to get involved in that wacky uh, calculation I just mentioned. Why not wait till 66 and have it all be clean and green where you don't run afoul of the rules, okay? Uh, life's too short to run afoul of government rules, okay? We just don't want to get involved in that. So we try to keep it simple around here. Now, I want to talk to you something about the return of the Magi. We're not talking about Star Wars here. We're talking about modified adjusted gross income. And why is modified adjusted gross income important? Well, this little chart that you're seeing here on the screen is really interesting. This little chart originated in 1984. 1984. This is the numbers that came out in 1984. Excuse me for a sec. In 1984, when Ronald Reagan brought Social Security into the mainstream and they started taxing your Social Security, it wasn't taxed before 1984. This chart was the chart. And this chart was kind of diabolically brilliant because it didn't really impact anybody in 1984. But what it said is that if you were married and your modified adjusted gross income was $32,000 up to 44,000 or up to 43,999, 50% of your social security would be subject to tax. If you're married and you earn over $44,000 to any limit above, 85% of your social security would be subjugated to tax. And if you're single, you can see the numbers down below. Now, the problem with this chart is we are now in March of 2021. This is the same chart that rolled out in 1984. And do you think this applies to a lot of people today? Heck yeah, it does. Now, this is the thing that's really crazy. Let's say that you are married and your modified adjusted gross income is $33,000, okay? And one of the two spouses passes away and your income still is at $33,000 because the income was coming from lifetime annuities, IRAs, something like that. Guess what happens to the surviving spouse as a present for losing their other, from, as a present for losing their spouse, they now become a single filer. And if you look at the, thresholds down below, it's very likely that that single filer might go from a 50% MAGI tax bracket to a 85% tax bracket. So this is some stuff that is really important stuff and needs to be uh, monitored and built into a good overall plan. Again, uh, in the chat, you can find a link to our Calendly uh, I don't know if you guys even know what Calendly is. It's just a little uh, online uh, calendar, you know, where you can sign up for an appointment, okay? Uh, you can visit our website, winstonandcompanies.com, uh, and or respond to the follow-up email if you'd like to schedule a time to visit. So hopefully you're seeing this, some of this stuff to be pretty interesting and compelling. We are also going to, uh, I think, have we sent them out? this fact sheet. Yeah, I believe that we have sent this fact sheet to all of you that have signed up. So you should check your emails and you will have the updates for 2021 social security fact sheet. Now this is in addition to the white paper and the book offer. So there's three things that we're going to provide you with uh, as a result of today's webinar. I want to talk about optimizing your benefits. All right, so we're kind of getting into the home stretch here of things. We'll do a case study where John is 62, Jane is 61. John's Social Security benefit at FRA is $2,520 at age 66 in 10 months. Jane's at age 67, her FRA is $1,185. Both assume they would, they would begin benefits at FRA. Um. John has about $850,000 in his 401k, and they own a joint account over at Merrill Lynch or Fidelity of about $350,000. All of their money was invested in traditional balanced approach, 60-40s blend of stocks and bonds. See that 
all too common. John and Jane would like $6,000 a month income after taxes to support their lifestyle. Okay, that's a pretty good amount of money. That's about $72,000 a year they want to draw in an income from a little over a million dollars. One important piece of information, John figured that he would live to about the age of 85 based on his parents' lifetime, and Jane assumed she would live longer to about the age of 90. Clearly, life expectancy is a key consideration in any analysis, and different life expectancies can change your social security uh, decisions dramatically. Now, what I want you to take a look at here is when we put all of John and Jane's information into our retirement software, which runs a probability analysis, we learned that based upon their current planning, turning on social security at FRA and investing in a balanced portfolio, they'd have about a 57% chance that their money would last for their expected lifetimes. Um, how would you feel about that percentage if this were you? Would you be comfortable going into retirement knowing that you have about a 57% chance of your money lasting and as a result, about a 43% chance of it running out? Would that make you sleep good at night? Probably Probably not too confident, right? What if this was an airliner and when you walked up to the to the uh, board in the terminal and it said, uh, you know, let's say you were flying from Phoenix to Chicago and it said uh, United Airlines flight 52, 57% chance of arrival. Would you get on that plane with your family? You might have a little hesitation, right? Step number one to do is optimize your social security benefits for sure. Okay. Um, using advanced social security planning software, John and Jane's situation with John and Jane's situation, it turns out that they should take the following approach. Jane should begin taking her social security benefits based on her record when she reaches her full retirement at age at 67. This is exactly what she was planning to do anyway. So no big deal, but this is where things can change up a bit. In this example, John should wait to take his benefits until he hits age 70. This way, he can get the largest possible benefit. And remember how I said earlier, that could only benefit Jane later in life should John pass. Once John starts taking his benefit, Jane would automatically receive that larger spousal benefit based on John's record once she's eligible at her full retirement age, okay? So this is a really important thing. Wow, that's a pretty big jump. Let's say we did that and we pushed his back to age 70. Look at the jump, 73%. Now, one decision, that one decision moved them from 57% chance of their money lasting up to a 73% chance. Now we're moving in the right direction here. Still, how comfortable would you be if you came into our office to meet with us and we said, all right, everything's great. Um, we got a 27% chance you're going to run out of money going into retirement. Would that make you feel a lot better? Probably better than a 57% chance, but we still haven't you know, optimized anything yet. This next slide, step number two, is to optimize your portfolio. So we went from correcting the Social Security in the first desired pattern to deferring one John to age 70, and we really raised the numbers. Now let's take a look at optimizing your portfolio. What if we reposition portfolio analysis, analysis what if we reposition portfolio assets, I should say, with a goal of, of maintaining returns while more importantly, reducing volatility within the portfolio? So here at Winston and Companies, we offer something called a stress test of your portfolio. And here's how it works. Once we collect your statements from your existing investment assets, we ask you to complete something called a risk profile questionnaire, simple three page questionnaire that we use to determine how much pain you're willing to accept in investing once you're retired. And believe me, once people retire, their pain threshold goes way down. They don't want to know anything about losing money, 
Okay. And we will see people come to us that have actually retired and their investment portfolios are set up the same way they were for the last 15 or 20 years while they were trying to grow. All right. So investing during re retirement is really very, very different from investing while you're working. John and Jane had a fine portfolio for when they were working, but we can do much better for their retirement. You see, investing for retirement is a completely different game than investing in retirement. All right. Uh, you know, it's not how much money you make that matters. It's how much money you keep once you retire. So specifically, John and Jane need to reallocate their portfolio to reduce their volatility. This means that they need to create a portfolio that delivers more consistent returns over time next 20, maybe 30 years. They don't necessarily need a higher rate of return, just one that comes with less variance or volatility. Obviously, designing a lower volatility portfolio will be different for everyone. This needs to be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. So for John and Jane, let's assume that we're able to develop an investment plan. And as I mentioned before, I am a fiduciary. I'm an investment advisor representative with Brookstone Capital Management, which is regarded by many as one of the premier uh, registered investment advisory firms in the country. That maintains their expected coverage return, uh, but cuts their variance in half. How might that help them? Let's take a look. Well, success probability. Now we're talking. By combining the improvements on their social security planning and their investment planning, we're able to dramatically increase the, the probability that their money will last their entire lifetimes. We've moved from 57 in the initial situation probability to 73 and now up to 92% probability that their money will last through their retirement. This looks much better and gives John and Jane significantly more confidence in going into their retirement because they're prepared. You know, one of the things that I learned in, in, in sports and in aviation during my career is that we stay ready so we don't have to get ready, okay? And that's why our flight plan is so powerful so many, for so many people. We went from 57 to 73 to 92%. What do you think? Did John and Jane benefit from coming in and visiting with us here at Winston & Companies to evaluate their planning options? You know, what about you? What's your current probability of success with your planning? And I'm going to tell you, we see people come in here from all of the main wirehouses. How does our little family run company do business with people that were formerly working with Fidelity, UBS, Morgan Stanley? It's because you know what? They are investment oriented, period. We are holistic planners. So would making some changes with your social security claiming strategy help improve outcomes? You better believe they would. Would updating your investment strategies or changing your asset allocation be helpful? It darn well could be. So I want to recap. We're right at the hour mark. So I'm just a little bit over, but I promise you we're almost done. How can you choose, how you choose to take your social, social security disability benefits, excuse me, scratch that word disability, how you choose to take your social security benefits may be more complex than what you may first have thought. We can help you guide through that. Many factors come into play, including your material, uh, your marital status, your health, your longevity, your retirement savings, et cetera. It's important that you consider all factors before making a decision on when to claim your Social Security benefits. Here at Winston & Companies, we can help put that Social Security claiming decision in context for you with the entirety of your retirement income strategy. OK, so, you know, it, it really it really helps. So when you look at your overall income strategy, which is unique to every individual, Sometimes seeking to maximize Social Security benefits is not a strategy that meets your goals. Folks, this is why planning for retirement is so important. It's because you have to understand how all of the factors interrelate. 
And that's what our flight plan does so that you can get an outcome that helps you meet your goals. And each one of you in this or on this call is different from the person that from anybody else that's on the call. And that's why it's so important. Your situation is what we look at. So the three legged stool, you're probably interested in helping increase your social security benefits, but we all need to remember that it's just one leg of the three legged stool of your retirement income. All three legs need to work together to have a solid retirement strategy. And if you don't have a pension, and many of you don't, there are products available today, like an annuity, or an annuity with something called an income rider that can create supplemental income streams. Or we can develop smart beta type investments or other types of investments that are in low volatility uh, invested assets that can really work to provide a good set, steady stream of income. So your next step, please visit our Calendly uh, on our schedule page. That's calendly.com forward slash Winston underscore companies forward slash 30 minutes. Schedule your no obligation appointment before the end of the day. Again, you can do it on our Calendly. You can call our office at 602-456-1928. Again, 602-456-1928. Visit our website, winstonandcompanies.com. Um, please feel free to call our office 24 hours, uh, a, you know, a day, or if you do schedule appointment, please call our office 24 hours in advance. If you need to change your appointment. All right. So what can you expect from us? You could expect a comfortable place to have a candid conversation regarding your thoughts and your concerns and understand that we'll be here to listen. Um, you could also expect knowledgeable guidance to help you make informed choices for your needs. And there are absolutely no hidden or unexpected fees. In fact, if you do go to our website, winstonandcompanies.com, and you look up in the upper left-hand corner, you will see our process. It's laid out for you. So for those of you that are new to us and you're thinking about scheduling an appointment, we encourage you. We put that on there to kind of take the mystery out of this. Go on to our website, winstonandcompanies.com, upper left-hand corner, our process, and you will see just exactly what you can expect. Ask yourself this question. Is 45 minutes of your time worth potentially creating a retirement income strategy that affords you greater level of financial confidence? You see, we know for a fact here at Winston & Companies that most people will spend more time planning a two-week vacation than they will spend planning a 20-plus year retirement. So with that said, I want to thank you for coming in. Thanks for your time. I hope you found this webinar to be helpful. Go talk to the, um, to the uh, or, or reach out to us, I should say, and uh, let us know if you'd like to come in for an appointment. Are there any questions at this time? I don't see any open questions, but let's take a minute. And if you, um, if you have any questions, go ahead and click on the, um, the, the Q and a, and we'll try to field some of those questions right now. Uh, if not, you can expect to receive an email from us thanking you for your attendance and providing you options to get our book, to get the white paper. We already sent you the one white paper. And uh, again, thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you all have a great day and a better tomorrow. Thanks again. I'm just going to hold here. Let's see if we have any uh, Q&A. None coming in. Thanks again.